Everyone's afraid of interest rates increasing. We know they're going to increase at some point, whether it's this year, next year, who knows, but they are going to increase. So you're a potential property investor or you're already a property investor and you want to buy more properties, but you're super afraid of interest rates rising and what that will mean for your ability to hold these investment properties. Should you continue to improve your portfolio, increase your portfolio, or should you invest in properties right now if you don't even have any, despite interest rates increasing? This is the question that we'll look at today, looking at interest rate increases versus rental growth rates, passive income growth rates, to see if they balance off, whether it's a good time to buy an investment property or not. My name is PK and I help people build passive income using data without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent every single time. Guys, if you get value, whether it's right now or at the end, smash the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, right? Give it a like. That way more people can become educated through these types of videos. More people can make sound investment choices or even if they're not looking to do anything, just become more educated because knowledge is power. Let's get into it. So I want you to understand, let's say this year, worst case scenario, Reserve Bank governors basically said it won't happen yesterday, but let's say rates rise twice, right? Interest rates rise twice and they rise by 25 basis points each time. In other words, a 0.5% increase in interest rates. Let's say they go from 2.5%, your normal loan rate at the moment, to 3%. <clears throat> now on a $400,000 mortgage, a little bit on the high side I'd say for investment properties, but let's say $400,000 mortgage, an increase of 0.5% in interest rate, that equates to about $2,000. $2,000, all right? <clears throat> now, how much do rents need to rise on an annual basis to compensate for that additional $2,000 interest repayment that you're potentially paying this year or next year? How much do rents need to rise? They need to rise by $38 <clears throat> per week, okay? $38 per week. Is that realistic? Is that realistic? That's going to be the topic of this video. So check this out. What you're seeing here is quarterly, median, weekly advertised rents. Okay, in other words, rents, capital cities versus regional. So you can definitely see that capital cities, this red line, they haven't really been rising tremendously. In fact, they've been pretty flat for the last year, <clears throat> right? But check this regional one out, this blue line. Right, just between March of 21 and December of 21, right, last year, rents rose by at least $40 here to here. So not even in a whole year, like less than a year, all right, let's say three-fourths of a year, they rose by $40, okay? And see this tra trajectory. This trajectory was improving well before COVID. You know, people say it's all because of COVID, people able to leave Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, work from home, move to regionals. That's why regional rental demand has increased. This is disproving that theory. It's saying that actually rent started increasing regional all the way, you know, back in 2016, 17. You can see it gradually rose. <clears throat> And it really shot up last year. And this trajectory, I mean, you can see this is not a linear line. You know, it's becoming exponential. Rents are, ri are rising faster more recently than they were two or three years ago. What this tells me is that in the next six months, rents in regional uh, areas on average will rise by way more than $40. In other words, this whole interest rate increase that everyone is scared about, am I going to hold my properties? How am I going to invest in properties? If you're investing in the right location, especially these regional areas, guys, this interest rate is negligible. This, If an interest rate imp increase happens, it's so negligible on the scale of things in the context, because on the other side of the scale, we're seeing rents rise so much, okay? So you've got your expense line increasing by about $2,000 a year because of... Uh, a 0.5% increase in interest rates and your revenue line, your rental income line is eclipsing that, okay? The, the proof is just here. Let's have a look at some other charts. So this is advertised weekly rent in capital cities. And you can see that despite in the previous chart where we're saying capital city rent has been pretty flat, you know, that's mostly the case for just 
some capital cities, some others like Adelaide, you know, there's these purples, you know, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, you can see how they're actually improving really nicely. Hobart increasing a lot. Darwin has gone through the roof. It's really the Sydney line, which came downwards, which is kind of, you know, causing the overall story to be flat. But actually, if you look at all capital cities except Sydney, to some extent Melbourne, they're actually going up as well. So you can invest in smaller capital cities and still beat the interest rate rise. Um, here we go in regional areas. This is really the story, right? And I love regional areas, except for this one right here, which is, I think, um, regional WA. You can check this out. Regional Tassie, um, regional Queensland, regional um, South Australia, regional New South Wales, all these lines are, are increasing so much. I mean, let, let's have a look at uh, regional Tassie. Um, since about last year, March till about this year, it's gone up from about three, 300, I want to say, to about 360. That's a $60 per week increase in rents, okay? And that far eclipses any interest rate movements. And what this chart is saying is the top five SA4 locations, regions nationally with the largest year-on-year -year rental increase. Okay, so there's some areas here like Tweed, uh, you know the, the good areas here guys, and a lot of these we've been investing in, Sunny Coast, Grafton, how good is Kofsav and Grafton being Gold Coast, you know I've done so many videos on the Gold Coast, um, Perth, you know that we're investing in, in places like Northeast Perth. Um, Shepparton has been a winner. So many, Bendigo, I can't tell you how many properties we've bought in Bendigo. All of these areas have increased in rents by, you know, close to 20%, but a minimum of about 12 or 14%, right? And so that once again tells us that rental growth rates are on the move in Australia. There's a huge rental crisis and not enough rental properties, even in regional areas compared to the demand. And if you're not investing right now because you think interest rates will rise and that will mean that the cost of your borrowing will increase, that's true. But please don't forget the other side of the scale. Your rental income will increase so much more that you know you can just put aside the interest rate story for now. Guys, I've got a few more charts, but hit the subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up if you're getting value. Really want to be data orientated here, right? Not just make up my own stuff. As you know, who, you know those of you who follow me. Um, I'm really against all these sort of house and land packages, really against all these property investment companies who kind of just put marketing spin on things. I'm, I'm just really passionate about bringing you data. <clears throat> okay, gross rental yields, capital cities. Okay, so those of you who are in Sydney, Melbourne, you might think, how am I going to get an investment property with such great yields? You know, where I live, those of you who are thinking this, Sydney, Melbourne, is so negatively geared, and that's true. I mean, check out these two charts, Sydney, Melbourne, these two lines down here. That's definitely not offsetting the interest rate rises. But I just find that so much of the commentary around Australia, you know, especially in the mainstream media, it's centered around Sydney, Melbourne. But you just look at Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, some of these smaller capital cities, I mean, each and every one of them, except for maybe Hobart now, it's a dip down this green line, each and every one of them is hovering around 5%. You know, at current interest rates, or even if interest rates rise by 0.5%, you only need 45 to 5% yield to buy a positive cash flow property, right? And that rent will continue to increase. So all of these locations are giving it to you. Brisbane's giving it to you. Adelaide's giving it to you. Perth's giving it to you etc etc it's such good opportunities buying in those smaller capital cities and of course regionals much higher right much much higher um, you've got regional queensland all the way up to seven percent almost you've got regional wa close to 6.5 percent you've got regional south australia places like mount gambia um, close to six percent you know and apart from these two stragglers regional new south wales and regional victoria in which there are still actual markets where you can get five, six percent. All of these regional areas are just giving so much positive cash flow that it doesn't matter what interest rates are or even what they will be in a year or two, you're making so much passive income. Next chart, I want to 
help you understand the projection of this rental growth rate and these heavy or healthy rents. Of course, they're good now. They've been improving, but what's going to come? Monthly new rental listings, okay? Check out this regional one, this um, blue or aqua line. New rental listings, in other words, a sign of supply, okay? They've actually been going downwards all the way since 2016. In regional areas, there have been less and less new rental properties for rent, you know, on an incremental basis, on a month-to-month, -month, quarter to quarter, quarter basis. What that tells us is that supply is drifting down. Demand, if it continues, if it increases, what we will see going forward is rent continue to go up. There's a huge rental crisis, let me say it again and again. It's actually, I would say, the, the problem is with the government. <laughs> um, they're not building enough houses, social houses, housing commission, etc. There's not enough houses for people who want to rent. You can't blame anyone here except housing policy, domestic policy. And, you know, we're living in a capitalistic society. Property investors are making the most of it, right? They're the ones stepping in to provide housing. And they're benefiting from that because there's just not enough housing for the amount of people who want it. <clears throat> All right. And then the last chart that I want to say, median days on site or median days it takes to rent a property out. You know, how long are these rental properties sitting on the market for for rent. Um, you can see that this line as well is coming downwards all the way since sort of 2017. This chart goes back to, this includes regional and capital cities. You know, this red line, of course, there's seasonality, ups and downs, you know, January, etc. Um, but in general, this trend is downwards, which tells us that Demand is steadily increasing. The previous chart was all about supply steadily decreasing. This chart is all about demand steadily increasing. That's why it's taking less and less time. Last year in September, less than 20 days for a rental property to you know, effectively be rented out. And, and this is a, an average, which includes you know the really bad markets of Sydney, Melbourne, inner city apartments and all that kind of thing. So demand is strong, getting stronger. Supply is weak, getting weaker. What do we think will happen to the rental, um, that rental revenue that property investors get? It's just going to increase, 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 especially in smaller capital cities and regional areas. Guys, if you're thinking twice, three times now about investing in property or expanding your portfolio because interest rates are rising, guys, you need to understand both um aspects or both sides of the weighing scale. Yes, your expense is going to increase with higher interest rates potentially in the next 12 to 24 months, but the rent that you're getting in the door is increasing so much more. Why would you not invest in property, you know, given that there's hundreds of thousands of dollars to be made? Hopefully I'm not sounding like a, a spruker here, but literally over the next five years, if you're buying a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar market um, property, you're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, at least a hundred thousand dollars in growth. And if it's not costing you any money to achieve that, even in an atmosphere or landscape where interest rates are rising, why wouldn't you do that? Okay, food for thought. My name's PK, and guys, I want you to be educated. Don't just take my word for things. You know, watch my videos, follow the data, understand what the data is saying. Take a step up. You know, I'll leave links below to the Facebook group with more than 11,000 people to my podcast. Really try to do it yourself. You know, one thing's for sure you should invest in property or improve or increase your portfolio. The thing that's not for sure is whether you can do it yourself or not. Watch my videos, there's about 250 of them right here on YouTube. If you can't do it, if you've tried, you can't do it, I'd be more than happy to help if you vibe with what I do. You don't need a buyer's agent, you can do this yourself, guys. It's not rocket science. All right, my name's PK. Please hit the subscribe button, turn notification bell on, and give it a like, give it a thumbs up. That way, you know, that really helps my channel. You know, you can see how much I'm passionate about data-driven investing because no one really is in Australia. Everyone's trying to sell you something. I'm trying to sell you something as well, but I'm wanting you to be educated before you buy anything. All right, guys, take it easy. Catch you later. Bye.